Hey, what is up y'all? Ryan here with Southern Reptiles. It has been a long minute since I posted a video on YouTube and it feels good to be recording again. Before I forget, please hit that like and subscribe button and also hit that thumbs up button as well for me on YouTube. But uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, it's been a while, but you know, somebody messaged me and was like, are you not keeping animals anymore? And I messaged them back and was like, even though I'm not, you know, recording it, life still goes on here at the house. I'm still taking care of the animals every day, still doing everything I got to do. And uh, just needed a little break. Me and my wife were having a baby in August, our second child, another boy. I'm extremely excited for that. And we're just getting the house ready and just needed to take a little time off to focus on that. And don't get me wrong, I missed making videos, but here I am back at it. Out here with the chickens, running around. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. I think I might do a uh, little tortoise food giveaway in the next week or two, some cactus in Missouri. So stay tuned for that as well. And always remember to check out the website at the link above and enjoy all right first things first i just wanted to show you guys something pretty cool right over my back fence that is a big gator of course there's definitely bigger but just about i would say that's probably a female about seven feet long big fat tail really big i don't know what she's been feeding on but she is heavy so I'm in one of my redfoot enclosures. These are actually some adult redfoots I have for sale. And as you can see, there's one right there. It's a little hard to see. It's very overgrown with weeds in here, but I like it that way. And they like it that way. Plenty of food, plenty of places to hide. But anyway, so I was walking around. And I noticed this hole right here and you know, maybe at first I would have thought that was a raccoon hole, but generally raccoons are extremely messy. They're not trying to hide anything like a tortoise would be. A tortoise is trying to be as discreet as possible to basically stop predators like a raccoon from coming and digging up the nest. So it looked like one of the female redfoots that's in here probably dug a hole right there, gave up on the nest for whatever reason. She might have hit a tree root. So then I looked over here and noticed that the ground is very disturbed. Sometimes like we'll have big balls of grass like this and they'll try and, or they will lay a nest right next to a big ball of grass like that. So I saw the ground was kind of disturbed. It looked like something kicked all these pine needles from the pine trees up above kind of over it. And then I noticed that there was this little stick wedged into the dirt as well so figured something dug here so let's check it out and there you go so that's the white of an egg and i know they haven't been here long but i don't know how long so this is one of the smaller females more than likely because the eggs are pretty small. So I'm just going to gently set the egg in the grass just so it doesn't rotate. I normally would have a container, but this was kind of very spontaneous. I had a yellow foot lay yesterday and obviously a red foot lay recently. So they are laying, but this isn't typically the heavy, heavy laying time. All right, works for me. So we got a nest of four redfoot eggs. I'm gonna get those in the incubator. In a case like this where I didn't physically see the female lay the eggs, I will just kind of put a roundabout date um, 
but I don't know the exact date and that's okay. It'll give me an idea of when they're gonna hatch. I don't need to know for sure. And I generally check the eggs to see if they're fertile anyway, about a month into incubation. But cool find. All right, time to feed the North American spotted turtles. They are in a 300 gallon tub here. And they all go running. <laughs> Got a handful of Missouri turtle diet. Don't mind the pump noise. Spread this all over the place. And they go to town. These are just all around awesome turtles. I've posted about them before and spoken about them before. They they only get about five inches. Very easy to keep. You just need to be careful. Um, they don't swim very well, so you gotta give them plants to be able to cling onto like I have here. And you don't wanna keep them in too deep of a setup as hatchlings. I only keep them in about two inches of water. But they're just a beautiful turtle. Awesome. And that's an adult male, full grown adult male right there. Just tell me that is not the most beautiful turtle you have ever seen in your life. That is the Peruvian Mata Mata turtle. It's difficult to see when they're not in the water, but when they are, their neck extends out. They have a very long neck and they're just beautiful in color. And these Peruvian Matas are very bright compared to some of the other Cellus Frembriata, which is the scientific name. You'll see some with a very dark brown coloration and some with a very bright red coloration. These are kind of in the middle with like a pink orange hue to them and they're just gorgeous with a kind of yellow head and some red on the neck there. And look at that belly, very beautiful. I have three of these left, captive born babies, and they're just feeding on live minnows. You can feed them rosy red minnows, which are usually sold at every pet store, and they're just awesome. I have two giant Mata Matas in my pond, and they are just so, so cool. I love them so much, and they do get big, but they do not move very much, which is a good thing about them. They are a very kind of docile turtle. As you can see, this one's starting to get comfortable now and moving, but they sit still and they're just an ambush predator. They don't really go searching for food. They're very similar to snapping turtle where they go after, they, they lie and wait for a fish to swim by and then they eat it up very quickly. They suck it up almost like a vacuum cleaner. It's very cool. There's my turkey walking around right there. But anyway, just figured I'd show you a quick clip of that. Okay, so next to this enclosure, I just wanted to show you as I was walking by, I have some nice papaya plants growing here. And these ones are about, I would say, five and a half feet tall. Those are newer ones that sprouted. And these are some older ones that are about nine, ten feet tall. You could see some fruits growing on them there. And then on that one, you can see some flowers blooming where the fruit's about to grow. And these are just great plants for people, especially in Florida that can grow them. They just, they offer ample shade. They offer the fruit, obviously, and papaya is not cheap, especially if you're buying three, four, five at a time. But the leaves as well, the leaves will fall off as the plant continues to grow. And you can see, these guys love the leaves. They eat the stem, they eat the leaf itself, and they love it very much. These are two adult redfoots. One's a hypo, and one's just your regular typical redfoot. Both are beautiful and both are chowing down. And you can see they're just hanging in the shade over here. It's really hot over there. And they're just hanging out in the shade, chewing on some leaves. And it's always good to offer ample shade during the summer because they need to get out of that hot sun. These guys are a rainforest species. 
and that deep shade is what they really need. So I figured I'd just show you guys that. Okay, so I'm just feeding a little Opuntia cactus to my spider tortoises. The one on the left is actually the youngest female I have, and the one on the right is the oldest male I have. And now, I don't know that for sure, but I go off just by looking at the shell, and you can clearly see how the, the female on the left has that very distinct, clear-cut pattern, and the one on the right, the male, has a very kind of opaque, uh, you know, faded pattern, which tends to happen due to just age, really. Um, of course, in captivity, that fading of the color is probably slowed down, but um, it definitely happens. Here comes somebody else. So I have four males and five females, and these are extremely hard to acquire. I was very blessed to get my hands on a group of these, and they're just doing phenomenal. They're a little dirty on this organic topsoil, but they seem to like it a lot. And if you're interested, I have some of this cactus it is now for sale on my website at www.southernreptiles.net, so feel free to check it out. All right, everybody, that is it for today. Thank you for watching the episode. I had a great time. Glad to be back posting some episodes on YouTube. I am actually getting ready to jump in the truck and head out to FedEx. I have four orders to drop off at the FedEx Ship Center, going all over the country, Texas, Louisiana, Pennsylvania, and California. So thanks again for supporting the business and supporting the channel. Please remember to hit the like button the thumbs up button, subscribe, and stay tuned for more episodes. Have a good night.